after the Rapid Games in the Grand Chess Tour tournament in Leuven in Belgium. Wesley So had a clear lead, but then they went into the blitz part of the event. So basically it's a double round, all play all. And Wesley was playing very responsibly, very holding his lead, but he collapsed in the final two games, losing them. And uh, that allowed others to catch up. And well, let me tell you about some of the other big winners of the day after this game, which I really enjoyed between Levon Aronian and Vishwanathan Anand. As ever in Blitz, there were lots of ups and downs and we're gonna see that in this game. A very responsible, solid start from both players. A Joko Piano, we've seen this many, many times before and it's like they're deferring the battle till they get all their pieces out. But actually here, we're at move nine, here is where things started to take a bit of a turn. Normal move in this position is just to drop the knight and then we have a, a heavyweight strategical battle on our hands. But Aronian dropped the bishop to c2, of course it's a normal kind of move, uh, perhaps leaving this bishop a little bit stranded and then you put the knight on f1 and so on. But it allows a tactical shot and played knight g4, attacking the pawn on f2. This has to be defended. And then bishop takes f2 from Anand. Well, I don't know if this came as a surprise to Aronin. He thought for a half a minute before playing rook e2. Uh, so presumably it did. Um, it's a four sequence of moves. Rook's attacked. Now, if white can get this knight, then white is doing very well. But bishop a2 is the problem. So this rook is trapped. I mean, it's a bizarre tactical sequence. But this is blitz. You have to make the, the best of what's on the board. So first of all, we're going to make sure that that bishop doesn't get out and of course it's going to take the rook and that ensures that this knight is trapped as well that's not going to come out if it spins here of course uh, it's going to be trapped by the queen for example so anand gets what he can uh, by giving up this knight he takes aronian takes and after that tactical sequence, which was uh, more or less forced, we have a situation where white has a bishop knight against black's rook and two pawns. So numerically, black is a little bit better. And I, I think the key here is whether black can actually open up lines for the rook so at the moment this one is doing nothing in the corner but obviously the rook on e8 is is well placed opposite the queen and if black can hold his position together then it could be very good for him white's uh, aim is to try and stir up trouble to get some attack on the king i think that's the only way that White is going to try and get through this. And we saw both of these things happening. So Anand launching the pawns forward, Aronian turning towards the king. And here f6 looks like a very solid move to enable black to protect along the seventh rank with a queen, maybe a rook sometimes as well. And yeah, just covers a lot of important squares as well, g5 and extra protection for e5. But Anand chased the queen. Of course, an exchange of queens would be favourable for black, that's what Anand wants. Reduces any attacking chances, so Aronian nudged the queen back, d5. So starting to open the position for that rook. 
And now here, Rook F5 is a very interesting move, actually, looking to swing across here. But Aronian played Knight F3, also very interesting. In fact, once again, the most prudent move is to play F6 to shut out White's pieces. But Anand took on E4. This is Blitz. You know, you, if something could be taken, you take it. And there's, you know, no obvious continuation for your opponent. In fact, this is the moment where Aronian started to go into overdrive. He is so dangerous with the initiative when he's attacking. Mate threatened on g7. That gets defended. And now knight g5, excellent move. Attacking f7 and things are going White's way. f5 from Anand. He obviously thought that you know, he could hold things together here, or was hoping to anyway. And here there is a brilliant move for White that Aronian missed. He could have played Rook takes f5. This is fantastic. And the point is that if Queen takes Rook, then out of the blue, Queen c7 is a winning move. There is no defense to either Queen g7 or Queen h7 checkmate. Very often it's these lateral moves that are so difficult to spot. Uh, and by the way, if pawn takes, then this leads to checkmate. This one's a bit easier. And it's just a question of chasing the king across the board. And queen d6, checkmate. There we go. I believe that's called a, a guéridon checkmate. Not an epaulette, a guéridon checkmate. In this position, instead of taking on f5, Aronian took on e4, which, well, it's a far more natural move. In Blitz, you, you know, you, you play natural moves. And you play that after nine seconds. And here, if Anand had played queen d7, he's actually still in the game. Um, I mean, it's very difficult to divine this in a Blitz game. But the basic idea is if this is taken, then the rook comes down and the queen gets counterplay against the king. It's probably going to be a perpetual check. Um, and otherwise, black is setting up counterplay with the d-pawn. But instead, Anand pushed on with c4. And here, Aronian went for it. He played rook takes f5. And this is a brilliant piece of calculation. In blitz, this is absolutely superb. Now, in this case, well, in fact, uh, queen takes rook would still lose to, to queen c7. You could just take the queen. Um, so that that's an obvious one. Um, Anand took the rook. And here, well, we can't spin round with knight e4 as in the previous variation, but knight takes h7 check is a winning move. And this is really well calculated by Aronian. Obviously, if that's taken, then there's queen g7 checkmate. The king ran and Aronian pushed it. In fact, it's forced checkmate, but not so simple when you've got the knight quite a long way out of play. This one is definitely more difficult to calculate, but a fantastic achievement for doing this. Now, if the king steps backwards, then that allows white pieces to join in the attack. For example, like this. And then we have a mate in the corner. So after this check, Anand stepped over, c7. Check. And here Anand resigned. Let's just go a little bit further on. There are some nice checkmates here. If king d7, then that's very nice. Caught in the crossfire. And the knight plays its part. That's very nice. The knight covers the f8 square. Or coming back here, if king b6, bishop e3, and queen takes queen checkmate. I think we'll finish on that position. That's really elegant. Well, I think any of us would be proud to have played that in a classical game. 
to have calculated that out. But this was a blitz game. That's an absolutely superb achievement from Levon Aronian. And he was one of the big benefactors from Wesley's collapse at the end. Wesley lost his last two games. And so after day one of the blitz, Wesley So was still in the lead. He had a fantastic score after the Rapids. But, uh, well, ground had been made up and Aronian had 16 and a half points and Karyakin also had 16 and a half. He had a superb blitz day. Um, so Karyakin, I mean, he has real form, you know, former world blitz champion. Um, and yeah, it's such a solid player, really good this. So, so he's, he, I think is is my big tip to win the tournament. We'll see. Uh, win the Blitz tournaments anyway, and he might even catch Wesley. So uh, depends whether Wesley has the energy to uh, keep going. But Wesley's still in the lead um, if went with the combined score. So anyway, I'll be reporting back after the final Blitz day in Leuven. In the meantime, if you want to see some more sensational checkmating attacks from Levon Aronian, then do check out his his playlist. And there are a few games I would recommend to you. Uh, there's his game against Matlakov from the World Cup in 2017. There's his game against Carlsen from Norway Chess 2017. And also his game against Richard Rapport from uh, Vikonze. Sensational attacks from Levon. Thanks for watching.